Okay, we call this meeting in order. Please rise for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Here. 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 Mr. Robinson. He may be late. No, sir. He's not coming. That may not come. He's definitely not coming. Okay. How about Mr. Bruce? Is he coming? I don't believe so, but he's another one. Maybe late. Mrs. Kelly. Here. Mr. Fowler. Here. Mr. Wood. Here. Mr. Basor. Here. And Mr. Wright. Here. Okay, public notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given by the clerk in the following manner. One, posted on the bulletin board in the borough clerk's office on January 6, 2016. And two, emailed to the retrospective courier post on January 6, 2016. Reports. Oh. Move that. We have a report of the municipal court for the month of uh, September. Is there a motion to accept the reports as read? I so move. I'll second that motion. Motion by Ms. Kelly, second by Ms. Passio. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Approval of minutes. A motion is in order for the approval of minutes of the September 27, 2016 meeting as submitted by the clerk as each member has received copies of the same. I'll make a motion. I'll second that motion. Motion by Mr. Ranieri, second by Ms. Passio. All in favor? Aye. I wasn't here for that. Okay. Ms. Kelly? Okay, question. Communications. Uh, Calvada's family, a thank you note from Mayor and Council for the flowers sent upon the death of the former mayor. Is there a motion to accept the, uh, the note as, as sent to us from? I make a motion to accept communications. Okay. There a second? One second. Okay, motion one is passed here, second one is Kelly. All in favor? Aye. Accepted. Committee reports. Finance and administration. Mr. Ramirez. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Good evening, everybody. Uh, last night was uh, a blast. If uh, you didn't have a chance to check out the Halloween party, and Patty will get into that in a minute. It was a great time. Everything went well. 
Uh, good job to everybody involved, Patty and the committee. Um, I'm a little tired from last night. Uh, and I have pictures that I do, we'll see them later. Uh, in finance, things are pretty steady. Um, as I mentioned last week at caucus, each year, as always, we do our best to comply with New Jersey's best practice program. We file on time and in time. Uh, out, of a, out of a list of 30 possible correct practice procedures and policies, we fared pretty well with 25 correct, and two procedures were introduced as a resolution last week at caucus, bringing our total to 27 out of 30. Uh, that's good news, and the rest is progress. Okay, thank you. Uh, public thank you, Ms. Kelly. Thank you, Mayor. Raffle license 1701, full tabs for Holy Child Parish, various states. All paperwork is in order. I'd like to make a motion to approve that, and I'll go with the next one. The bingo license 1701 and 1702, Holy Child Parish, various states. All paperwork is in order, and I'd like to, make, to put a motion on the floor for both uh, approval of uh, both licenses. Okay. Is there a uh, second? I'll second. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's just the motion. All in favor of approving resolution 1701 and 1702? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the resolution is adopted. And I'd like to continue on with my report. I'd like to put on the record a beautiful letter that was received by Chief Paul Daly. Dear Chief Daly, my husband and I would like to thank Officer Amato for retrieving our daughter's stolen cell phone. Uh, Officer Amato is at the high school. Um, and he's there daily from 7 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon. The phone was stolen from her backpack while she was at cheering practice on October 6th at the Triton High School gym. Officer Amato was helpful, professional, and compassionate of the situation. Our daughter, Jessica Archibald, was very upset. Officer Amato was able to retrieve the phone the very next day. Thank you, Officer Amato, for the great work and the service to the community. <coughs> Respectfully, Mr. and Mrs. William Archibald, and I want to thank you and your officers for the great work that you do in this town. And the residents do appreciate it, and it was a pleasure to read this letter. Thank you for letting me have it. Continuing on with the police department, 29 motor vehicle crashes this month, 128 arrests, year to date, 1,688 arrests. We had one Narcan deployment and two drug arrests. Thank you, Chief. Uh, now, tell me about the bike patrol. Is that over now? Bike patrol is now finished. Thank you, thank you. I'll be looking forward to that. Um, the Runnymede Fire Department wants to have everyone look at their smoke detectors. They would like to remind everyone that when you change your clocks, that's coming up this weekend, change the batteries in your smoke detectors. If anyone needs smoke detectors, please contact the fire marshal's office 939-2817 or the fire station 939-4390. We also have a limited amount of 9 volt batteries if you already have working detectors. You should practice fire safety every day and check your detectors, detectors once a month to ensure that they are in working order. Our fire department was very busy in October. We had 163 calls for fire and EMS. The grant, the FEMA grant that we were given is almost completed. All the helmets are in and we're waiting for the delivery of the boots. If anyone went to fire prevention week a couple weeks ago, you will notice that the fire department has renovated and remodeled the working area for the EMS and the fire department people. It is lovely. 
They don't have it furnished yet, that they're in the process, but we were very impressed. They put in new windows, new doors, um, took out the old paneling. It was very impressive, and it was beautifully done. Uh, right after we left, they tore up the floor in the EMS dispatch, and I understand that that is now done. So there's a new floor in there, and new desks and uh, furniture going in there. These are our employees, and it's important that we take care of their facility. We rent from the fire company that built it. And it's important that we assist them when they're having this remodeling because it helps our employees, the EMS and the fire department, to do their job better. So I just want to just reiterate the fact that our fire department is there for us 24 seven now. There's no, any, not any time when we don't have someone on duty. And it's a wonderful thing. So that's my report. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Alma. Very nice, Alma. Thank you. Okay, public events, Ms. Pass. Oh, John, I'm really happy that you enjoyed last night. Yeah, it was did, great. Did you enjoy last night? Oh, it was a lot of fun. fun. Okay, I want to thank my committee, Councilman Bernier and Councilman Kelly, for, uh, and of course, we couldn't have done it without our uh, mayor and the rest of our council. Uh, we've always had it at, at the gym. But this year, because the gym was being, there's a new floor, and it's absolutely beautiful, but we can't walk on it yet. But there is a new gym floor, and uh, because of that, uh, we used the field house. And we had a great time. It, I, I, I think everyone had a great time. And uh, so now we have options. Uh, so if we're thinking about it for next year, we'll see. Um, I, I do want to thank our volunteers, because without our volunteers, um, it, it couldn't went on either. Uh, and they bring a positive news to our town. So thank you for volunteers. Thank you, Rose, out here for helping us so much. Thank you, Rose. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Uh, she volunteers for every event. She volunteers for <coughs> Christmas is coming next. Uh, thank you, Rose. Four weeks. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> <Eat me> tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's finished cleaning up. Um, okay, so. Thank you. Thank you again for everybody, our police officers. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Chuck Burns, uh, our bikers, uh, every, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so, we will go on with another happy event, and that is on November 27th. It is a Sunday, and it's always the Sunday after Thanksgiving. That will be our fire truck parade and our Christmas tree lighting. Again, we'll need your service. <laughs> Again, thank you, Rose. Um, so it's the arrival of Santa and Mrs. Claus. We have entertainment. The festivities will begin at 6 o'clock. Um, the parade starts at 7. And also that brings the town together, and it brings a lot, a lot of residents that love to come out. And actually, I've been told so many times that between the 4th of July parade and our fire truck parade, people come from all over. So they tell me that, that it's the best. I don't know, but that's what they tell me. And I, and I love it when they say that. So with all of that, I will say progress. Okay. Thank you very much. It was a good time. It was amazing. It was. Uh, engineering, Mr. Farrer. Uh, thank you, Mary. Uh, I just called this meeting last, uh, last week, so I don't have much to uh, talk about. But uh, I see the parking lot. It's looking great out there. And uh, I'd like to defer to Mark uh, on uh, what's going on. So I'm sure he knows more than a little pressure. Thank you. <laughs> uh, public yeah. Works, uh, Mr. Reed's not here. Do you want to record anything for Public Works? Uh, leafing has started, if anyone doesn't know that. Uh, the schedule is on our website. That's on, there's a calendar that shows what side of the town that they'll be going out there. I think we're in pretty good shape this year with three vehicles that are ready to go. And I believe we also have a shared service agreement with our neighbors in case one of our vehicles breaks down, which typically happens every single year. So. Uh, we are prepared this year, but you never know what's going to happen. Um, is there anything else for public parks? Thank you. That was good. <laughs> okay, parks and recreation. Mr. Lobenstein is not here, uh, but as, as was reported, the, the, uh, the floor at the Harry Williams building looks, it does look fantastic. Um, hopefully it, it'll, it'll do the job that we wanted it to do, you know, to keep the property clean, to make it more functional. 
Um, you know, we'll see. Everything's turning out well now. I think we've got lights, we've got heating and air conditioning. Uh, we've got a coat of paint on the walls. Uh, we're going to have new thresholds and a new rug in the lobby. When this vendor's done, it was all part of it. And I think the last big part is the uh, replacing the bleachers. As some of us know, one of the bleachers broke last year. Uh, things won't last forever for some reason. 35 years seems to be pushing. pushing they won't comply. Uh, <clears throat> yes, do you know how long the floor should last? 20, 30 years? How long is my turn? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I, you know, I uh, I do I, I apologize. I don't recall exactly what the uh, the uh, warranty was, but I think this floor will last a long time. I think one of the things that we're trying to do a better job is uh, the company who's putting the floor down. Is we're going to hopefully enter an agreement where they'll come back once a year to uh, clean and, and prep the floor for the, for the next year. Hopefully, that'll make the floor last a lot longer. I think that's the problem we always have. We do stuff and then we forget about it. So hopefully we can enter into an agreement with them. They're right out of Berlin, New Jersey, so hopefully they'll come and, and do that. Uh, so as for that, it's that's progress. Um, administrator's report, Mr. Wright. I will rely on my report from August, but what, what we will have tonight is uh, we're going to start reading. Okay. Works. Stand down. Speak loud. Actually, the new microphones are on the list. <laughs> Wireless mic. <laughs> With the chairs. One of the last things that we have to do uh, on our checklist for this year was for next year's uh, insurances, we needed to update our policy manual for required changes. Uh, we're looking at revising the whole policy manual, but these were mandatory changes that had to be done uh, immediately for this year's plan. Uh, there'll be a first reading tonight uh, of the ones, and I have a handout to give out when we get to that point. And we can briefly go over the changes if there's any questions. That, you know, you, it's not as simple as changing the to and and things of that nature, but it's just adding language or subtracting language and we new policy. So. Okay, so we're walking that on as order 16-14, is that what they said? Correct. Okay. Joyce, this was a very light year with only 14 ordinances. So I didn't feel as much as... We should try and get up to 28 Perfect. next year. <laughs> okay, anything else? That's it. That's it, okay, thank you. Solicitor's report. We may, uh, we may uh, be having a mediation, and we may not. It's always up in the air, huh? Yeah, we just don't uh, responses from the other side. The mediator, not us. The mediator doesn't responses from the other side for extended periods of time. Uh, again, it, 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 it sent out stuff. We indicated the dates that we were available. We set it up a few days beforehand. We were notified that the other side couldn't make it. We sent out new dates. We, <coughs> can you not hear me? That's all right. They sent out new dates and uh, they sent out new dates until we selected. Here. Oh. Uh, so we selected, I forget, toward the end of the month. Uh, notified the mediator. Uh, I, know, I, I know that the other side hasn't responded because just yesterday I got a letter from the mediator, copy of a letter that he sent to the other side asking for a response. Uh, spoke to the mediator, mediator and he said he just doesn't get responses. So we might or might not have a mediation other than that progress. Great. I can just chime in on that though. The disappointment there is that the first mediation that we had went so well that we said, let's meet next week and put this to bed. And it just like went away. That's a shame. That's a shame. Okay. I'll see what happens. Thank you. Engineer's report. Enlighten us. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I submitted my report in writing prior to last week's caucus, and Craig Riley from our office went over the report in my absence. Uh, just a few things to add since then. Uh, we did have a pre-construction meeting last week for the borough hall renovations. Notice to proceed was issued for this past Monday, and we are currently in the shop drawing submittal and review process, and we believe construction will start in approximately two weeks on that. Uh, the contracts for the Orchard Avenue Sanitary Sewer re re Rehabilitation Project uh, just got signed by the mayor, and I will return those to the contractor and set up the pre-construction meeting probably for later this week or early next week, and we'll get the notice to proceed for that project out as well. Um, and on tonight's agenda, 
We have resolution 16-128, which is to reject bids for the slip lining project, and we're in the process of re-advertising that with a little bit of a tighter uh, scope of work, so we hopefully yeah. get better. Yeah, we better. did that already. Uh, uh, that's on from 26, I'm sorry. From 26 on down has to come out to 26. Oh. Uh, we'll that's what happens when I'm not in caucus. I don't know what happens. We did all I apologize. Yeah, we did do that. that. that sorry. I apologize for that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we are out to bid for the uh, re advertised project. Yes. And we're getting bid at the end of November. Sorry about that. Do you have any update on the uh, parking lot next door? Uh, I've been coordinating that with the new construction for the side door entrance. We're hoping to be done with the parking lot before they actually start the side construction. Okay. Out of their way. Um, they are looking to do the concrete work behind here. We're going to try and, we're going to require one door to be open at all times. So it's either going to be the very back door or have access to the side door here. We're just not going to take away both of your doors. Okay. That's so the three doors, you'll have one door work. <laughs> you hearing that, Chief? That there might be a time when the two doors, everyone have to come from the one side. Okay. okay. But yeah, we're hoping that we we're we hoping the base paid uh, either late this week or early next week. Really? Yeah. So they're That's they're nice. moving along. Mark, excuse me. We have elections coming up, and they'll be here in the fall. Are people going to be able to have access? Yeah, back door. Yeah, through the back door. Yeah. The back door. And for some reason, the work in the side door will be open. Yes. Yeah. So at some point, that's what he's hoping. One door will always be open. Okay. We're going to, there's still concrete work to do out back, but we're going to make sure that one door is always open and they'll have detour signs on how to get the pedestrians in here. Okay. Great. Very good. Yeah. Vote by mail, everyone. Vote by mail. <laughs> push it both ways. It's not ever going to just be the front door. No. no, no, no. When I say three doors, I, I mean that the police have a side door. You don't mean the front door? No. No, I'm sorry. When I look at the doors in the back, I always count the door that the officers go through. Because that, that's getting new concrete all the way up to that. So that's what I mean. Your officers will have to just walk around for... They'll go through the salary. They could go through that. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm just saying the courtroom will always have one door. There'll be access to here. For the very back police door. Okay, great. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Thank you. All business. Uh, as always, we give everyone in the audience an opportunity to uh, uh, comment on the agenda items uh, before we vote on them. This is a portion. This is an opportunity for anyone to. Uh, this is a public public portion. If anyone wishes to uh, ask about the agenda items before we vote on them, uh, please come up, state your name and address. Uh, seeing no one, is there a motion to close the public portion? I so move. Okay. Motion by Ms. Uh, Kelly. Second by Ms. Passio. All in favor? Uh, Okay, public portion for the agenda items is closed. New business, we have resolution 16137. It's a resolution reducing a property maintenance, maintenance fee. This was an adjustment, I believe, because of a, um, a sale and the bills kind of overlap. Uh, is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion. I'll second that motion. Motion by Mr. Ranieri, second by Ms. Passio. Discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Passio. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Mr. Fowler. Yes. And Mr. Ranieri. Yes. Four eyes, two eyes. Okay, this resolution is adopted. Uh, resolution 16138 is a resolution adjusting sewer charges. Uh, this is a like an increase on a sewer sewer charge for forty two dollars. Uh, is there a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve resolution to adjust the sewer charges. I'll second. Motion by Ms. Passio, second by Mr. Ranieri. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Mrs. Passio. Yes. 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 All right, resolution is adopted. Resolution 16139 is a resolution authorizing cancellation of taxes for Block 137, Lot 18, due to a 100% total disabled veteran application approved by the tax assessor. Is there a motion for this? I'll make a motion. Motion by Ms. Ren Mr. Ranieri, second by Mr. Farrell. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Mrs. Kelly? Yes. Mrs. Passio? Yes. Yes. The resolution is adopted. Resolution 16140 is a resolution authorizing the transfer of a premium from the tax collector's redemption account to the general fund. This is an amount of $100. Is there a motion to approve? I so move. I'll second. Motion by Ms. Kelly, second by Mr. Ranieri. In session. Roll call, please. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Mrs. Passio. Yes. Mr. Fowler. Yes. Um, Mr. Ranieri. Yes. Resolution is adopted. 
Resolution 16-141 is a resolution authorizing the transfer of a premium from a, a tax collector's redemption account to the general fund. This is in the amount of $6,500. You have a typo on the one. So is that $6,500? $6,500. Okay, this was a large one. Just let everyone know we get to keep this money. So, Is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion. I'll second. Motion by Mr. Farrell, second by Mr. Ranieri. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Tyson? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Yes. Resolution is adopted. Resolution uh, 16142 is a resolution authorizing the borough of Runnemy to enter into an interlocal services agreement with the County of Camden for furnishing and delivery of sodium chloride. Uh, this is what we do every year. We share the, the purchasing of uh, what we call salt. But, yeah. uh, is there a motion, please? I so move. I'll second. Motion by Ms. Kelly, second by Mr. Ranieri. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Passio? Yes. Yes. Uh, two hours. Right, this then you jump down to the 1612. Yeah, I think we're going to squeeze in at 1630, or excuse me, 143. Um, we want to add a, a resolution. Um, Ms. Passio, do you want to elaborate on this? This is for sustainable. It's for sustainability, and it's for, we'll get 10 points for this, and it's uh, to send out a letter to each department and asking them, we did it three years ago, and asking them to please shut down their computers at the end of the evening. Yeah, so the letter requesting all of our office personnel to turn off their computers at the end of work, and a letter sent out, not to all employees, or just the departments? Uh, just to the departments. Just the departments. I'm oh, sorry, to the departments. Okay. Departments. Okay. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve that. I'll second that. Mr. Ranieri, second by Ms. Kelly. Any other discussion? Uh, well, this isn't, this is just a motion. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, resolution adopted. Are we okay with that choice? That was something I know we kind of walked on. We should have the letter from a couple of years you know, ago. I, she, uh, Patty talked about it. I talked to Rich about it today. I didn't think we needed a resolution. No, uh, we're just formalizing it so that what, I, what I'm hoping we'll do is with the so application. Put on the paychecks. If you put on the paychecks, what we want, I think we want to do is when I sign the resolution, we make a copy to put it. Yeah, up link it to our application. To show that to them. We'll yeah, up link it to our application. To show we're, only, we're only 10 points away. What's that? The deadline keeps going off, so. There is an access to certain days. It's both. Sure. I Both think yeah. on certain so. it's, 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 you know, okay, no. the, the League of Municipalities, I, we're, we're getting close. I think it's because of the League, they, yeah. they do the final certification. What's the League of Municipalities? It's the 14th, 15th, and 16th. So it's I have the feeling we should say the 17th. Oh, okay. Maybe it's the 14th. Yeah. Okay. So if we, once I sign it, we'll just make a copy and we'll get it to Miss Adair. Okay. Great. Okay. But you said we're 10 points away. What does that mean? Uh, we're just putting together our application, and our application, when you add all these different elements, you add them up, you have to equal a certain amount, and 10 points means, let's say we needed 120. We're only 10 away, so there's a few more items it's that we have to bronze. do. It's for the bronze. Oh, for the bronze. Yeah, you know, we, we, got got that, we, got we have to renew it every year. Yeah, in three years, years, it's a renewal process. Yeah. So either things that we've already passed, we have to reiterate yeah. them. Or, okay, okay. Or Thank you for that yeah. Okay, then. Now we have uh, first reading of Ordinance 16-12, which is an ordinance amending a portion of Chapter 248 of the Code of the Borough of Runnemede. This is the, uh, what was previously known as the Mercantile License. To uh, help with clarification, we're changing the title in any language uh, to say Business License. And the idea, of course, is any business in the community to register with the municipality so that we have information about that business and also have the ability to communicate with those businesses and also to um, uh, use it to make sure that it complied with our, our laws. What changed besides the names? Nothing else? I believe that, that just references where it said Mercantile It's now the... Yeah. It's just the language thing. Uh, it was brought up to me from other mayors in the county that uh, by making this little change, it, it, it clarifies a little better to some that would argue that a Mercantile is... And there's, there's, that's my typo. So there's a typo in the very first whereas. It says chapter two. Okay, so uh, is there a motion for the first reading? I'll also move. I'll make a motion to adopt on first reading and advertise according to law with the public hearing to be held on November 22nd, 2016 at a meeting beginning at 6 p.m. 
Okay, is there a second? I'll second that motion. Second by Ms. Passio. Uh, roll call, please. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Mrs. Passio. Yes. yes. Mr. Fowler. Yes. Mr. Ramirez. Yes. Okay. Then we have Ordinance 16-13. Uh, which is an ordinance amending a portion of Chapter 375 of the Code of the Federal Economy. This is our towing ordinance. Um, and let the solicitor at least elaborate, because it's uh, sure. just like three items, I think. Okay, so the first thing we did was we, we eliminated reference to the word license. Okay, it's now going to be authority. We're going to give them the authority to do this. Okay, license. So there was concerns uh, expressed that the word license might give a different than we particularly wanted it. Uh, we also changed it for the application to be a three-year term starting in 2017. The same process is in place in terms of application, the same fee for the application, and the renewal fee is the same because the police department still has to do work in the renewal because there could be additional drivers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We didn't change, so it's, it's, it's no 500 hour application and then renewal is fine. We provided, uh, so most of this is language changes. Um, we also provided that for those applicants who are not approved, that we give them written notice within 14 business days. Uh, there's a provision that they're unhappy that they can appeal to the council, and that, that also has a 14 day. And um, we also just put language in there because uh, the solicitor who handled the litigation component over this was concerned about a portion of it. So we put a provision that says you can choose, you, the council, can choose to have one tower or, or two towers, but not more than two. And if you choose to have two instead of just one, then you put them on, you establish an alternating mechanism. So it might be every other week or every or every other month, whatever it might be. It's not, you don't have to do two, it's just giving you the option. If you do have the option, then how do you do that? You do it on an already basis. I think that's the substance of that. Does that seem clear to everyone? Yeah. yeah. Good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need a motion. I'll make a motion to adopt on first reading and advertise according to law with a public hearing to be held on November 22nd, 2016 at a meeting beginning at 6 p.m. I'll second that motion. A motion by Mr. Ranieri, second by Ms. Passio. Roll call, please. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Mrs. Passio. Yes. Mr. Fowler. Yes. Mr. Ranieri. Yes. Mr. Ranieri. Yes. Oh, then I have a question. Yes. Is the current version of this that I got this week the, 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 the most recent version? The one that you got. I didn't get any today. I no, no, I didn't do it. The last one was that I did was, I believe I did it yesterday. I don't have that, you didn't send me that. Well, yeah, okay, I could do that. I can, what I'm gonna do is hand it to you. Okay, okay, uh, what I have is the one. It was email, yes. I thought it was email. I emailed it to you and the Rich, did you get it? I'm pretty sure it was email, email. yeah. I emailed it to you. Okay. Just, you, were you, not, you weren't here yesterday, right? No. It was yeah, so I got an automatic response from you, you said, you know, I'm not here anymore. It should have been there. Was it but anyway. I got this yesterday. It'll be easier if you have it electronically, so if you don't have it, Rich, you can just forward it. Yeah. I'm not going to be in my office tomorrow, that's all. Uh, I can get it done, ultimately, but, okay? And if there's a problem, just call me and I'll have it taken care of. Okay. Um, Mr. Wright, we're, do we have another ordinance, 16-15? Yes. You want to, what, what, what are we titling this? What Joyce has it? 16-14. Yeah, 16 is an ordinance amending the current policy manual. An ordinance amending the current policy manual. Okay. And uh, did you want to elaborate just briefly about that? Very quickly. Um, can you commit that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, the these are changes that are required by the GIF to be included in the, in the policy manual. They're kind of, I guess, current events and what they see through the, uh, the issues that they deal with at their level. So there's there's two things I have. One, I'll just briefly go over the outline and then we can just touch on each one and where. Are these well. inserts or they pull stuff out there? So basically, the, the document you have in front of you basically says page 10, page 117. There's, it explains. There's, there's, there's a couple of different Right. So it explains it. 
that's the whole policy on the handout you have, but yeah, this sorry. just gives you the synopsis of what the change is. So I'll tell you what the change is and then we'll go over it. So change one is a uh, modification to anti-discrimination policy slash Americans with Diabetes or Disabilities Act, uh, section one of the manual and employment application to comply with the New Jersey Pregnant Worker Fairness Act. Uh, the foregoing reference policies and applications were amended to comply with the New Jersey Pregnant Worker Fairness Act which amended the law against dis discrimination to prevent discrimination based on pregnancy, childbirth, or pregnancy-related medical condition. Uh, also requires the employers to provide reasonable accommodation. So while we already do this, uh, and we've actually just gone through this recently um, in a positive way, you know, we basically have to put it into our policy manual, and the information on that one is on page one. So page 10 was originally the anti-discrimination policy, so now it has a slash. Then page 117 in the policy manual is the Americans with Disabilities Act policy. So um, the changes are basically just a required language as included in here. Right, right. so uh, the change number two, and the reason why I asked for the <laughs> commitment to, to quickly moving through this, we can discuss this at our next Monday morning staff meeting, is the communication media policy, um, which is actually a, a new item for us. That's going to be at approximately page 123. And we're going with the standard language um, that the GIF has provided for us, which kind of makes it easier for us. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. And it includes everything from use of computers, social media, you know, video surveillance. Basically, you know, there's three pages worth of language there that will be inserted into the policy manual. So we'll move right on to the next one. Uh, change number three is uh, a new one. This is uh, the employee dating policy in section two. So basically it's just a, a paragraph. I'm sorry? I have a question. Go ahead. We have, we, it's my understanding that we, we don't have any resources person. Is that accurate? Oh, we absolutely do. Is it you? It sure is. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but is, is I'm it, married, don't worry. Is it a designation? I'm just concerned that this is, to, you know, the notice is to the immediate supervisor for human resources. And hey, this is on the very, uh, about the top half of the top. This outside sentence starts with immediate or immediate. Mm -hmm. the immediate supervisor or being human resources, I wonder in our, our circumstances should it say very much. Just a thought. Okay, so you just want to amend yeah, that? Yeah, because, because I, don't know. Okay. Right. I don't know how many people know that you're human resources. I now I did do a very thorough job of going and through and control finding all the borough running meetings from local units, but they threw me a curveball with that one. So that's why you handed to me read, right? Absolutely. So we just want to say business for sure. Yeah, say or business administration. I think that's all right for us. It should still be A B though? Yes. Okay. No. Unless what is the end? It's your call, it's our call. Nobody's gonna mind if we make it end as opposed to war. I think it should say it should say end. And? Well, because you know, we're going to be responsible for a policy, and it's not brought to our attention, but they brought it to their supervisor's attention. That goes back to your question: Who is your supervisor? Who's your supervisor? Uh, yeah. Who's your supervisor? Yeah. Yeah. Who's your supervisor? <laughs> and yeah. so, we will so have a form. So in the, what's the change going to be? It, it's going to be back to their supervisor and and the, the township administrator. The, the township administrator. Right. Business, business, and the borough administrator. Business. All right. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, that's all I have. Sorry. Uh, change number four is in the employment section to just add additional language for I nine, which uh, our payroll clerk just gave me a copy of one from an employee. So uh, we do this already. But basically, uh, employability proof after acceptance, but before starting employment, all new employees shall be required to fill out an employment verification form, I-9, and to provide acceptable proof of right to employment in the United States. So, so what does that mean? I uh, there, an I-9 is a, a form that the, that the employee fills out after we appoint them, and it just basically is designated that they're... It's like a federal form. It's a federal form that they're authorized to 
to work in the United States. They have checklists uh, of what information they're allowed to provide, whether it be passport or license. You have to, it's kind of like DMV where you have to pick, pick two. Especially if you're having trouble getting to sleep. <laughs> it's dry, very dry. But, uh, uh, and the next one is a modification of the Open Public Meetings Act procedures concerning personnel matters. Uh, on this one, uh, basically, it takes out. If you go to the next page, because there was a control break in there that they could not get to, to come out. Uh, there's a section in blue at the bottom that basically used to uh, give the governing body discretion whether they wanted to invite the uh, affected employee into a closed session. And I think the, the blue at the top basically says it's the right of the employee to be present. Which the law says so we don't need that. Correct. The law says it. The, the law says it, but it is one of their required yeah. documents. Yeah, you so. give notice if you tell them they have the right to be present, they have the right to. They, that, that, well, when I do them, it says we're going to discuss this in, in closed session right. unless you want us to dis discuss it in open session. Right. If the employee does not respond, then we mandatorily have the discussion in closed session right. because we can't disclose personnel stuff. Right. But they do have the right to be in there. They have the absolute right to be there right. to present their case or okay, right. not to be there when there's discussion and consideration. Correct. Sure. Okay, so this is ordinance 16 14, which is an update right. to the current. Two more. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Well, they're, they're kind of part of the process, but they're not actually in there. Um, number six change is that basically, you know, we're basically saying in there that we'll, we will amend our application. Uh, we will no longer ask if someone was convicted of a felony on the application because the New Jersey law that passed in 2015 precludes us from doing that. So it's definitely part of that. And change number seven was the SEPA notice that went out in the last paycheck with all monthly, yes, uh, well, it was a monthly paycheck, so it went to all employees that basically uh, advised them that the business administrator is the point of contact for uh, the Conscientious Employees Protection Act, you know, if you feel that there's an issue that needs to be brought to management's attention. And we're supposed to get that once a year, is that correct? Correct. So it's also posted in a prominent place where it can be seen. What was that? It's oh, also it's posted in payroll. Yes. And it's yes. payroll. <coughs> yeah. Okay. So these are our fire changes. We're also going to continue to revise the entire policy manual uh, by February 1st. Wow. That's aggressive. very aggressive. Very it's very aggressive. But uh, I'm in the mood, and if we bang out, I'm creating a management subcommittee with my department heads, and we will attack an issue. Look at the face. An issue per week. <laughs> You can have your own rules and regulations, and anything that's not mentioned in those regulations is governed by our policy manual. You're absolutely right, but the media policy goes even further, Mr. Wright. Correct. Because there's people like, like Correct. our social media policy will go further in the police department, so that's why we have our own regulations. And that's to that's all right. employees in the police department? Yes, it is. Because I'd like to see that one. Really? Yeah, they can go over it on Monday. They don't even know that. No, 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 there's, there's, uh, okay. it's a, that's a side, side bar. dig. Okay, so uh, 1614 is a uh, amendment to the current uh, borough employee policy, policy manual. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to adopt on first reading and advertise according to law for the public hearing to be held on November 22nd, 2016 at a meeting beginning at 6 p.m. Okay, is there a second? I will second that motion. Motion by Ms. Kelly, second by Ms. Passio. Roll call, please. Yes. Mr. Uh, Mrs. Passio? Yes. Mr. Farrell? Yes. And Mr. Yes. Yes. All right. Okay. Is there any other business? I, I just have one question. Yes. Uh, you sent me the ordinance. That you did send it to me. But then there were two other emails after that with nothing attached to it. So the one you sent me initially was okay? The one I sent, it? yeah. I, I don't know what happened. But the one I, I sent one yesterday, which was the, was the final one. I may have just. I assume the, the next two were going to be revisions. No, or not. they're not. They might have just been. I might have just First sent you yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff that I maybe okay. had sent to discuss with Lou or something. Okay, so now we have uh, payment of bills. 
Someone want to make a motion? I make a motion to pay the bills. I'll second it. Okay, motion by Ms. Passio, second by Mr. Farrell. All in favor? Oh, no, excuse me, roll call. Mrs. Farrell. Yes. Mrs. Passio. Yes. Mr. Farrell. Yes. Mr. Farrell. Yes. Mr. Farrell. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Okay, bills shall be paid. Uh, good and well, this portion of the meeting is open to the public. Any motion to speak? Uh, state your name and address. Please come to the microphone. Yeah. Uh, Mike, I'm 572 Sheraton Lane, front of me, New Jersey. What Mr. Wright was just talking about, that's already been adapted into state law. Uh, I, let me just clarify. There are other employees that are not police officers in the police department. No, no, it has nothing to do with police. It has throughout the state. That's already been adapted. It has been adapted years ago. It's already adapted into state law. Most of these, most of these things are. Maybe you're just. Covered. Most of these things are in fact covered by the law. Yeah. But the, our insurance coverage people, our insurance coverage people require us, even though they're already the law, to put them in our policy manual. Oh yeah. So it's actually redundant, but you know how insurance companies. Are. Right. So that's, that's exactly right. So when he when he made that statement, I'm saying to myself, well, there's law already. You have to have. It. I'm surprised. In other words, you don't have it. Is that is that what it's saying? You no, no, no. We have it. We have we have our policy manual, which keeps up to date with the law. So each year, the insurance group notifies all of the municipalities that are in the insurance group what changes they need to make in their policies to be con consistent with updates in the law. Okay. So we constantly are updating our policy manual to up with the law again. It's redundant because it's low, it so we have to do it. Right. But it more becomes a notice issue to our employees, so we give them the policy manual. They're aware of the policy and procedures. It's kind and of you're right, and I totally agree with that. Okay, that was my misunderstanding. Yeah. Okay, then I understand. The other thing is I would like to thank Mrs. Kelly before the meeting. Uh, her and I had a discussion about what I had said about the newspaper last week, and she clearly understood what I was talking about, and I thank her for that effort. I also clarified with some people who are making bad notations on Facebook, and I explained that to Mrs. Kelly. I got rid of those people, and you won't see any bad remarks about running me, okay? Well, it's a factual thing. You're making, people are making statements, but yet they don't come to the meeting. So you won't see any bad, you know, anything that's bad in there, because I'll track it down and see who's doing that. If you want to make a statement, come here and make the statement. Thank you. Okay? And that's why, so I don't know where John was trying to get to last year. I just yesed him to death. Yeah, okay, John. Yeah, okay, John. So, you know, I did that also. But run to me, what I'm trying to do is make the town, it's not like a little bow. It's, it's a big bow. And everybody should chip in. Plus, council's been doing some good work as far as these vacant properties. You know, and maybe the paper will say so, how the vacant properties are being taken care of and how the grass is being cut, and they're looked into it, and they're trying to get the banks to sell these properties. So we get a little bit of everything in the paper. The last article in the paper was pretty good, because it's given us an overview of everything. If we can keep that up and put some good, now council could put a Facebook page up about what's going on too. We have a thorough Facebook page. You're right, we can do a better job. Yeah, do a better job of putting what's going on this way, these people will shut their mouth, okay? What they don't know, in the absence of information, rumors flourish. It's not my statement. No. Somebody else said it. <laughs> I'm just repeating it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, I I want to say regarding this night, I thought it was awesome. The change in location, I think, could actually work in the future with more, you know, like put it out there. People known last night, there would have been more people there. I think the turnout was great, especially, you know, with, with the notice of loss given, but I think it was incredible. And I think also what was incredible was to see all you there. Um, Officer Burns is a crowd favorite amongst the kids. And he, he is, I mean, my own kids too, but like, my kids weren't even there, and just, like, if you look at the kids, the kids that haven't even hit there yet, he just, you know, he, he really, like, if last night was a success, and that's what everybody, you know, on council needs to see. I think seeing you all of it was you, you know, seeing all of you there, mayor, us included, was huge. Did you like my costume? I did. It was very original. <laughs> Did you know it was a mayor? 
He was, he was the mayor. The boring <laughs> mayor. <laughs> but his wife and daughter were dressed. My wife and daughter were dressed. But uh, no, it was, it was a huge success. Um, Mrs. Kelly, I want to personally, as a school board member, um, thank you for your attendance at our meetings. I just think that moving forward with the council that's in place now and whoever, you know, to follow, um, I just think those two groups in collaboration not only benefit the youth of this town, but the taxpayers of this town. Because you know, decisions with you as a group and us as a group are what benefits both of those groups. The taxpayers who would be willing to understand where their money is going, and then the youth because obviously where their money is going benefits, where the taxpayers' money is going benefits each other. Police department always have such awesome things to say. Um, rough weekend for the police department, some more than others. Um, but again, I will just say, somehow, you know, this town, through your leadership, through our leadership, through your leadership, um, comes together in such tragic times. So um, awful and, and devastating times. Um, for, I'm sure that, for, I'll put it on record, that the um, young man's viewing is this Friday from 6 to 8 in Collingswood, um, Lake Foyle Funeral Home, if any of you are going to be available. But again, to you guys and, and you know, your time off and you, everything, you guys do awesome. Um, have we, I, you know, I just have to be that girl, have we as a um, administration, mayor, council, have we discussed or is there any plan to do a blue line? Yes, actually, uh, we were waiting for the county to finish Clemens Bridge Road. Okay. Uh, members of our police department plus members of our fire department if Mr. If the chief would like to yeah, only because you know I have it. Myself and Chief Laverty have agreed with uh, Mr. Wright. From East Second Avenue to Central Avenue, it's going to be a red stripe supporting the fire. fire. And, yeah. From Central Avenue, Clemens Ridge and Central Avenue to Clemens Ridge and Black Horse Pike will be a blue stripe okay. supporting the police. All right. What? What? I'm sorry. Your name? Mike. Simon. What Mike was just saying, like with regarding Facebook. Let's get that out because here's what's happened. We're allowing time. People don't come to the meetings. So I'm asking you, you're answering. That would make a lot of people happy. A lot of the quiet people that are in the rumor mill that aren't aware of what's going on other than their own opinions. You know, maybe just post it there that, you know, um, you know, I don't know, put it out there because that's, you know, if you look, I've only been on social media for like two months and it's been rough two months because I really have to like, you know, I, I, I really have to hide, you know, for a while. So if we could just maybe put something out there, or I will, you know. Um, my, my only concern there is that, that we support our agencies every day. I, and we've been in talks about this for a while. And to put a picture of it when we paint the line, I think shows it. But to say it's coming soon because somebody else is complaining on social media, I, I don't Well, it's it not only social reason. media. I, I just, you know, it's an, I, I'm in the community, you know, don't see me as much. I'm in the community much more than I'm on social media. So again, I bring that word that everyone else is talking about and everyone else is afraid to say. So although there may be negative, uh, I am opposed to the negative comments that are going on online about it. Let's not talk about why we're not one of them. Let's talk about the fact that we are going to do it. Do you know what I mean? I, you know me. I'm just, I'm just bringing what everyone else again is behind closed doors saying and afraid to bring to. So I think right, you don't have to put it out there that will be gone. I'm not going to just say it. All right. We will post it when it's done. I know, but I'll post it before you. Know, not even on social media. Now I thank you. Thank you guys thank you. truly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Uh, seeing no one else, is there a motion to close the public board? I'll second that motion. Motion by Ms. Kelly, second by Ms. Passio. All in favor? Aye. Public portion is closed. You know, I just want to elaborate that. You know, council does do a lot, and, and uh, I mean, I don't think this council always pats themselves on the back. And, you know, and, and a lot of things that we do, we're working <laughs> behind the scenes, and we're not always telling the public exactly what we're doing because I think it's important that we, uh, we, we figure things out before we get out there. And I, I think that the chief and the fire chief, you know, they, they've been discussing these things. And this is a good example of uh, there was a lot of stuff going on in the background, but there were circumstances why we couldn't get it done. If everyone knows, Columbus Big Road was being repaved. 
for a long period of time, and that's our, our, our main thing. And it's still not done, and we're still battling uh, to get these roads uh, uh, finished and, and done. How's that block wall coming? I forgot to ask you about it. Yeah. It's not going. It's not there. It's not done? It's not there. Yeah, the sidewalks. You know, things are difficult, and, and like I said, uh, you're right. I mean, we only meet once a month uh, in, a, in a formal meeting. We have our caucus meeting, but is every time that one of the members of council is doing something, I don't know if it's actually prudent for us to tell everybody in the, in the community. Hopefully everyone appreciates a representative form of government, and we're here trying to do it, but I think you're all right that we have to continue to tell people as we, as we get things done and uh, let them know, because you're right, people don't know. Uh, and we do appreciate your comments about the, uh, the Halloween. Ms. Passio and I were talking about it, Mr. Ranieri. All of us were saying we're hoping, obviously, the sign that we intend to put up in front of the borough hall will help to promote things because we do have an obligation to uh, communicate. And I think the signage and, and other, other media that we can use to yeah, communicate. Yeah, but especially that work and trying to get done on the Black Horse Pike. It's, you know, you're making preparations for it. Absolutely. So other than that, uh, hopefully everyone has a, a good evening and, you know, Turn your clocks back and an extra hour of sleep. My wife is looking forward to that. And vote. And vote next uh, yeah. So, <laughs> And vote. Yeah. And yes. Vote. No, no, no. <laughs> vote by mail, please. Sign up or vote by mail. No. Um, is there a motion to uh, adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. How about on two members? Motion by Ms. Passio. Is there a second?